All right, you guys, welcome back to More Life Podcast. This is your girl, Cassie, and my husband here, Kevin. Kevin, and today we are going to be doing a podcast with Maritza Gonzalez. So she reached out to us on Instagram, letting us know that she's been in a wheelchair for years. So I am super excited to welcome her on our podcast and let her share her stories about her life. In a wheelchair. I know. I can't wait. Um, This podcast is definitely going to be very informative because now we're going to get to find out what it's like being paralyzed in the later years. So strap in, you guys. Subscribe to the channel. And let's get started. You you got to let it go. You you got to let it go. nice to meet you over email, thank you over the phone thank so yes, yes, yes. It is i nice know to meet you. yeah thank you for responding back to me i know I, no problem you know i just wasn't sure like i remember like kevin saying like one thing he worried about was getting older mm-hmm. in the wheelchair mm-hmm. you know and i just figured i've been in this chair 47 years yeah so that's if I can answer any questions uh-huh. for you guys. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get this podcast started right now. So let me just oh. introduce you introduce you to the channel. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are here on the More Life Podcast, and we are here with Miss Maritza. Um, babe, do you want to say anything before we get started? Um, mm-hmm. I'm, first off, I just want to say thank you for coming on and wanting to share your story. But I can't wait to really get some wisdom from you. Because you say you've been in the wheelchair for 47 years? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that means that we're really going to be able to get some insight on, yes. um, I guess, I guess, growing up while being in a wheelchair in the 70s, 80s, 90s, you know. you 75. Exactly. Like, you know, uh, like you noticing, like, different technology that comes out for us. So I'm definitely looking forward to hearing, you know, just pretty mm-hmm. much like just information that you have yeah so. sure and then i also want to add you guys out there if you're watching this video make sure you guys hit the like button because we had a rough start and yes. maritza deserves a like down yes. there in the comment <laughs> and then also a comment you know thank you maritza for joining <laughs> letting us know your story because mm-hmm. you know it's not easy coming on here and getting all of this started yes. so anyways no um, all right, Marissa. So, for anybody out there, just tell us about yourself. Where you're from? You know, where have you lived? Where you're at right now? Um, well, um, I was born and raised in New York City. Um, but it's in the Bronx. Oh. Moved like upstate, like for about four days a week, and then back to New York for three. Mom just hated upstate, mm-hmm. so um, dad had what you call it a bodega. Oh, okay. Up, okay. You know, in in um in upstate, so that's why you know I spent my time there. Yeah. You know? And now I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. One oh nine today, but that's okay. Oh my gosh, I love it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so that's why I now have two kids. My daughter is twenty eight. My son is thirty two. Wow, they're our, they're our age, yeah, babe. Yes, I'm thirty one. <laughs> I'm thirty one. She's thirty. Yes. Uh, uh-huh. There you go. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So you're you're like a nineties. Yep. Yes. Born nineteen ninety. He must have been born eighty yep. nine. My son was born ninety. Oh, okay. That was how okay. Was you know what? I, I will be thirty two this year. Yeah. I forgot, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so you're you're uh, her son's he, age. That's yeah. crazy. What's his name? Yeah. My son is Jose. Jose. Okay. My daughter is Abriel. Okay. So my it's like Gabrielle, but take off the G. So uh-huh. it's Abriel. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. Do they so, live in Arizona with you? Yeah, they do. Okay. They're married. No yeah. kids. Yeah. So. That's our generation just, right now, kind of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like I tell my school. My daughter, she's not going to have kids, but yeah. 
I keep asking my kids because they've been married seven years and it's like, no, mom, we have other things we need to do. Yeah. Crazy so, life. But it's okay. It's yeah. okay. I just said, before I die, I just want to see them. I just mm-hmm. want to yeah. hold them, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So, yeah. And how long um, did you live in New York before you moved to Arizona? Or did you always live in New York? I've No, I've always lived in New York. I came out here to raise my kids. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I came out here like in 95. Oh, okay. Um, only because I love New York. My family is there still. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't raise the kids as like I was raised. Yeah. It, it's just not like that anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it was either, okay, raise them in the city mm-hmm. or come out here. Right. And the winters were hard as hell. Because mm. I New work. York. And, and, yeah. And I, I remember coming out of work and my damn car was full of snow. Oh my god! And I'm there trying to take off the snow, and it's landing on my lap. Horrible. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Gotta go." Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. that was another reason. Okay, my dad is actually from New York as well. He was born and raised in the Bronx. So. In the Bronx, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm Puerto Rican as well. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask you where, like, where in the island is his family from? To be honest, I don't know. Cause I, okay. to be, I don't even know if he really knows. Even though he did go back to live in Puerto, well, he was originally born in the Bronx, but for a period of time he had to go live in Puerto Rico for a little bit. But this is kind of when he was, you know, like a kid. So I, I really don't think he knows mm-hmm. like, as much stuff because there was a lot of stuff going on with my family that it was just, I, I guess people just didn't talk about certain things. So I guess he really mm-hmm. just don't have all the information or didn't have all mm-hmm. the information. And people really just kind of didn't share it. So it's something that he just never really, ever really liked. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess I like, talked about or really harped on like too much. But, right. Mm-hmm. It's okay. We still got the same blood. So yeah. Yeah, whether exactly. we go back or not, you know, we mm-hmm. are. Yeah. So, now, yeah. do you ever go back and visit New York? Every year. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. What, what time of the year do you go back and visit? Usually summertime. Summertime? Okay. Yeah, usually summertime. So I, I've gone in May, but it's still too cold. Because mm-hmm. once you get used to these hundreds, yeah. you know, like the 60s over there, it's like cold, you know. So <laughs> yeah. it's only summertime. We went to New York also, I, I want to say like a year and a half ago. And we went during um, kind of like the winter time in November, right before it gets really, really cold. But it was still cold. Yeah. Um, but we do want to go I, back during the summer. Is, is, is the summer, I'm telling you, the summer is time to go. Mm-hmm. Is that the time where you guys went on a helicopter ride? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh-huh. Kevin wasn't too happy? Nah. No. <laughs> I still went, though. I still went. I just had my eyes closed for, like, half the ride. Because uh-huh. like, I guess just putting your life in somebody else's hands is, is like, that scary. Yeah. Part. But, I, yeah. I really don't even like airplanes, so a helicopter was just terrifying. But uh-huh. but that's what she wanted to do, so I was like, oh, "Yeah, I'll do it." I dragged him it. with me. Yeah, so <laughs> I just held my camera up and just recorded her, so she can have the experience versus <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. So. Uh, she, she was having a good time. Oh yeah, she was. She was. I did. Yes. I really but, did. But at the same time, it was freezing. It oh was freezing. yes. So, so not only was it cold, like it was cold, but mm-hmm. you know when you go up. To higher elevation, it gets a lot colder. So up there, it it was like... We could not... I could not feel my hands. But I still was holding my phone. I could not feel (laughs) my hands. I was like, I don't even know how I'm working this phone. If My hands are numb. I couldn't feel my legs. Yeah. Well, (laughs) I I couldn't feel my legs either. Like, it was that cold. But... Yeah. um, yeah. Summertime. Mm-hmm. Okay. And now when you go back, just, I guess, now I'm asking for recommendations. What do you normally do when you do go to New York? Like, Well, if you're going to go to New York, you, know, oh. you got to go to Times Square. Okay. So mm-hmm. we go to Times Square. Then we go to, back when I was growing up, there was Studio 54 at Roseland. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They don't have that now. Some of them have smaller clubs mm-hmm. within like the 40 seconds. 
you know, yeah. Times Square there. Um, lots of food, pizza, cheesecake, mm. yes. um, brunch, brunch pizza is like the best. Yes. You know, um, it's, it, it's just, ah, the Chinese there's food is so amazing. much, yeah, there's just so much, yeah. you know, to do. Mm-hmm. And it's so real being wheelchair accessible, mm-hmm. not too much, mm-hmm. you know, cause there's like a lot of potholes and the ramps going down. Right. Just don't, you know, so yeah. that was kind of hard, you know, okay. seeing that, but, um, you know, you make the best, you know, of what you got, okay. you know, do what you got to do. Yeah. And now that does lead me to another question, kind of growing up. Um, cause when we went, I know we were like, okay, well we can't take the subway because there's stairs. Um, what was your main transportation when you were younger growing up in New York? Well, after my accident, uh huh. after I had a, um, drive or oh. take a cab okay. you know because just recently they put elevators but it's not at every station mm-hmm. so you can get an, an elevator in the Bronx mm-hmm. and you may have to go all out your way to Manhattan to be able to get onto another elevator so there are not many Okay, but um, I when I was married my my ex would basically carry me down and up the stairs. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Because okay. cabs are expensive, you know. But mm-hmm. now they have a lot of Uber, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, yeah. So, okay. um, yeah, I mean, I when I just went this time, I was just by the Brooklyn Bridge uh, over at Hudson, the Hudson River. Mm-hmm. And I took an Uber to Times Square, and it was like one way was thirty dollars. Oh my goodness! I'm like, oh my god, you can take the train for dollar twenty five. Exactly. You see, but the problem that we faced whenever we went was okay. Because here's how I kind of mapped it out: from a Uber from the airport to our hotel was like a hundred and twenty dollars. Right. So then that would have been automatically going and then coming. Right. So I factored that in. And then I was like, you know what? Why don't we just go ahead and rent a car? But then once we did that, parking. We like, you know, if we go out to eat, you gotta pay for parking. Going back to the hotel, gotta pay for parking. Like par- and parking isn't cheap. So everywhere we went to, we literally had to pay for parking. And I feel like that that kind of made it and then we had to walk. It yeah. wasn't parking. wasn't like right outside. It was a, down the street, around the block, you yeah. know. And I'm just like, what the heck, you know? And New York City blocks are long. Oh yes, they are. They're not just down, you know, the street here. I mean, they're long, mm-hmm. you know. Yes. But yeah, it, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. When you, I guess every time you get an uh, an Uber from the airport, it runs crazy crazy amount of money oh yes it is you know so but um it's worth it to me you know it's worth it yeah you know i'm guessing in the long run you save money Mm -hmm. in the long run in the long run you know yeah like once you go a few times then you'll know you know like okay if i rent the car from the airport and take it to the hotel um okay so at least i rented a car i saved myself that 125 you know even though they may charge it you know at the end of the the trip Mm -hmm. you're still saving some money yeah Mm -hmm. you know yeah hotels hold everything it's it's, i remember parking it was oh my god 35 dollars for an hour yes yes (laughs) yes (laughs) yes And then it was like, more. And then if you, you know, pass the hour, then you're going up to like $55. Like, what? Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Parking at the hotel was $55 a day. Oh, and then you yeah. couldn't take your car out. Like, it, it was no in and outs. You know, once you parked it, that was it. I was like, what? Mm-hmm. So now I can't even go, you know. It was horrible. From the hotel? Yes, from the hotel. At least the hotel we stayed at. The hotel we stayed yeah. at. I think I forgot the name of it. And then, and then another reason why we ended up renting a car was 
we wanted to do things that were kind of like far away from a hotel. So like in order to get on the air, in order to get on the helicopter, we had to go to Jersey. So, oh. so then we had to drive all the way over there. So that's another reason, but we yeah. just never even thought about the, the tolls or yes. <laughs> the park. Oh, we had to go to the George Washington Bridge. I don't even know. I, I don't know. I was just so stressed out when it came to that thing. It was. It, you oh. know what's so funny, Marissa? And then I was driving. So we're just uh-huh. driving, following directions, right? I'm going through all these tolls, not even knowing the whole time I'm getting charged for all these tolls. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the? Once I returned the car, I seen like an extra charge. And I was like, what are all these charges for? They were like, oh, all the tolls you pass through. I was like, what? I was like, this yep. is insane. And, you know, not even including all the parking I already paid for. But, yes, New York, I'm not going to lie. New York parking and transportation out there is ridiculous. Yeah, ridiculous. I feel like that, I feel like that, that almost kind of ruined the trip. <laughs> but, you know, like even... Uh, this is one thing that we didn't share either was that the day that we rode the helicopter, yeah, we were supposed to ride it the day before, but we ended up missing the flight because we we were late. <laughs> we were late. We got that is Kevin's time. No, but okay, 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 okay. Yes and no. It was like yeah. You know what? It was my fault. All right. I wanted to go get a water from the store, right? So we left to go get a water. When we came back. There was a train there, and the train was stuck, and it would not move. Oh, my gosh, So yes. So then we couldn't get to the place. So we're calling the place, trying to figure out, like, what to do. And then, like, the whole time, there was a whole nother entrance that wasn't on the map, and pretty much we missed the flight, so we had to get yeah. it done the next day. So then we had to spend all twice again, like, tolls, yeah. driving, all that stuff again. Oh, yeah. my, oh my goodness. That's crazy. But they did well, say that, that it was better. Yeah. They did say that the what? view was better that day. Like the view, like the sunset was better on that day. Oh, yeah, they did the day say before, that. So. See? See? So, <laughs> yeah. once didn't work out, but the next day was better. Oh, yeah. Still oh, yeah. cold. But I heard it, though. You know, I heard it because we didn't go in a helicopter ride for her birthday. Oh, yeah. So, I definitely I like, got an earful. Babe, you got to be on time, you know, but yeah. it's okay. <laughs> we yeah. still got on there. Still had a good time. Yeah. yeah. We did. We, had we a good did. Time. You did. Hey, that's fine. Yes. But and you got, you know, you got to see the city, so mm-hmm. you know, it, it's a view that not everybody can see. I know. You know? Yeah. So sure. I like to take the cabs um, that go to like um, uh, the Statue of Liberty, and they go down the Hudson, yeah. and they take you to Jersey, Staten Island. Yeah. So I like those those cabs, water yeah. cabs. Oh, okay. Cool. So that's something you may think about. Mm-hmm. I definitely want to go back. I definitely want to go back because I feel like our first experience, the parking really kind of messed it up for us. <laughs> like, that's how bad it was. But it, yeah. was, it was like we had a a bad, great experience. Like, that's why we want to go back. Mm-hmm. But, um, <laughs> you know, really plan out the whole transportation thing. Because mm-hmm. we had to yeah. worry about... We had to worry about parking every day because, again, remember, parking was $55, but we wanted to go out and do stuff. So we literally had mm-hmm. to take the crowd, and then we had to pay for parking going there, and then it was just, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I guess I you know. think that. It's, it's, it's like once you park the car, you're like, okay, let's spend all day here uh-huh. because we're not moving this car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So we were exactly. stuck every day in one place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, no, but I think next time we go, we'll probably do, like, the Uber you know, mm-hmm. cab. That's just going to be the best bet, you know, to yeah. avoid looking at parking and all that crazy stuff. Because, yeah, you know, then you're not restricted on the time limit. That's like too. you are with the parking. Exactly. You know, you just come and go. Yeah. Whenever you want. You yes. Know? We didn't, so we I didn't think, of, yeah, we didn't think it was going to be as bad as um, LA. LA is not that bad. Now that I went to New York, LA is not. As as bad. So, really? I thought yeah. twenty dollar parking was horrible. <laughs> like you know, it's not it's not bad at all, trust me. Mm. It's not bad. Yeah. I know you live in Bakersfield, right? Which mm-hmm. is yes. away from LA. Yes, it's like an hour and forty five minutes at the most. An hour and a half to two hours. Depending is that on with traffic? N- that depending on traffic. An hour and a half I would say, right? Like yeah. without uh, traffic. Mm-hmm. An hour and a half. But it's not bad though. Like I tell her well, I tell everybody, 
an hour and a half driving here isn't like an hour and a half driving somewhere else. It's it's easy here. It's it's very easy because the scenery um is is very open. You know, like everywhere else is it's a whole bunch of trees. You know, you get like yeah, you see it's just like, a way different driving experience over mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. That's true. All right. Okay. Because I know when I went over there, we we stayed, you know, in LA, and Mm -hmm. then we wanted to go. Oh my God! Up to the kids wanted to go to some park, some water park. Okay. And we were like, okay, so we start at ten. We didn't get to the water park until like one. Oh my god! But then it was just so hot. I was so tired. I was like, I just want to get in some water. Just take me to a pool, sit me there, and you go do what you yeah. want to do. Yeah, it because just, it, it yeah. got it was so hot. Mm-hmm. You know? Now, so. now, now, was this before you moved to Arizona? No, this was after we moved here. Okay, and you still think it's more hotter than Arizona? No, not okay. not LA area. No. Okay, but it does start I mean, you know, right here. You know, you know it gets hot where you are. So oh yes, it does. In Bakersfield, it gets very hot. It gets very hot. But I do know it gets hot out there in Arizona too. I drove through there at nighttime and it was like one ten. Right, mm-hmm. and it was still hot. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was. I put down the window. I put it right back up. <laughs> <laughs> at nighttime, this is at night, like eleven o'clock at night. So. Yeah, it made no sense, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I see poor people driving without AC, and I'm like, oh, my God, I feel so bad for them, you know? Because you can't. I know, like, by the time I get to a store and I get the wheelchair out, Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go home. Mm -hmm. Because (laughs) this, you know, you got to leave the car on, the AC on. And I depend a lot. On the steering wheel, okay. So it like it's constantly moving, and you can't lock it if the car's on. Mm-hmm. So that's a whole other bitch there that that gets me aggravated. And yeah, yeah. So, but it, I, I love it though. I love sitting in the sun. I just love it. Yeah, yeah. vitamin D. Uh, yeah, good. Vitamin, vitamin D is very good, it's especially sun. <laughs> it's the best source of vitamin D. Yeah, so. it is. My doctor just called me and he said that I was low on iron. And usually I get iron infusion. Okay. But this time he said, listen, sit in the sun 15 minutes a day Mm -hmm. and let's try the natural. Mm -hmm. We'll take your blood again in three months Mm -hmm. and we'll see. If not, then I have to get it like that. Yeah. But what happened was two years ago, I was sitting out here in the sun and I went to get um, I was on the phone with my cousin, and I said to her, I'm going to go inside and get some water. I'll give you a call in a little bit. She said, okay. So I guess what happened was when I went to get my water bottle, mm-hmm. I fell into mm-hmm. the, uh, to the cement, mm-hmm. and I hit my head, so I fell into a coma oh my for three goodness. days. Yeah, so I was out there for 45 minutes mm-hmm. on the concrete. So my whole right side of my body mm-hmm. is burned. Yeah. So I had to have, you know, five surgeries because it went all the way to my bone. Ooh. So like my knee and my my bottom area, mm-hmm. it went, it burned all the way through the bone. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. So now we have the ring and my daughter has it on her phone. Mm-hmm. And every time someone comes by, she's like, who, who just went in? And I'm like, I'm real. Like, mm-hmm. you know, give me a break. What if mm-hmm. I ever want to bring someone home? Yeah. She's like, I don't care. I'm still going to see him. Mm-hmm. So, you know, she has me on lockdown. Mm-hmm. So every time I go out here mm-hmm. and talk, just talk to people, um, I tell them, look, come over here by the door just so my daughter can see that we're talking, mm-hmm. that I'm not here alone. Yeah. Because you know? <laughs> she said, you know what happened to me? She says never again. Yeah, you know because I was in a coma and then so I couldn't talk. I didn't know. No one knew where I was. Yeah, when they came, my door was open. Mm-hmm. My wheelchair was in the house. Everything was. When they came, they stole my phone. They stole my laptop, my iPad. They they sold my stuff in the house. 
Wow. So, you know, nobody couldn't get a hold of me or anything. Okay, so, so somebody came in and stole your stuff? Mm -hmm. When when I fell outside, uh -huh. the paramedics brought my wheelchair in, but didn't lock the door. Oh. So they left. Mm -hmm. So my neighbors knew that I had gone to the hospital because mm -hmm. they called 911. But never, they had my kids' phone number, but never once called them to let them know that what had happened to me. Mm. So yeah. that's why now I'm like a phone. I had to get another laptop with that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, because when my son came to see me that night, mm -hmm. sometimes he comes over about 11 at night him and his wife and he brings I, he has a little Marley Aww. I love her <laughs> so um, yeah so she comes in and they come in at night you know like and so when he came he put the lock box to get the key and when he went to open the door it was open mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and he took some jewelry but I'm like you know it's just material stuff right you know you know, Karma comes back. So you're right. You're right. Yes, it just, exactly. It just feels like you've just been violated because I I had my car broken into the other day and it just mm -hmm. you no, know, it just it does suck. Yeah, it does suck. And it, it kind of sucks too. You know, you have neighbors that you feel like you can kind of trust, and then now it's mm -hmm. like, hmm, you weren't really, you know, you're you're not very trusting. No. Well, 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 I don't know. It just. You tend to blame everybody when you don't know who did it. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. right. So everybody's a suspect. <laughs> it, you know, so you know you try to. Well, you know, I live in these apartments by myself mm -hmm. now, and um, they're for the other side is for families, and then okay. the side where I am at is for people with disabilities and seniors. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I mean, come on, like yeah. one of these elderly people came and. Like what? Yeah. I just I don't understand. Yeah, you didn't have you like know. a like a find my iPhone <clears throat> like app on your stuff to where like you could track it down. They did, but it was tracked here to the complex. Mm -hmm. Oh, it wasn't like a pinpoint location. It was just a general area. Yeah, it, yeah. It just oh. said it was in the complex, and you know the kids came back and checked and checked and checked, and there was nothing. Mm -hmm. So. Of after a few days, they found the phone in the junkyard. Okay. So down south, Phoenix. Mm -hmm. They did find that. Okay. So, yeah. You know. Okay. All right, now. I guess, mm -hmm. I guess getting into your story, what year did you get paralyzed, if you don't mind us asking? 1975. 1975. Mm -hmm. Dang. That's, you said it was 47 years ago? Mm -hmm. I'm 58 right now. Okay. okay, so if you don't mind taking us to that day, how was that day going for you to the best of your ability? That that day was so good. I mean, I was your child, you know, yeah. so you, you're hanging out with friends and you're just having a good day, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then um, one of the the, my friend said to me, you know, we're going um, school shopping because it was Labor Day weekend. Okay. And then school over there starts the first week in September. Mm -hmm. So he said, you know, we're going to go school shopping. Do you want to come? And I said, no, you know, I, I have my family here still from New York. I want to stay with them, you know, hang out. Mm -hmm. But he kept asking and begging and begging. So he's eight years old at this time. Okay. So mom said, look, Marissa, just go, just make him happy. So he was extremely happy. And I said, okay. I just had like such a bad feeling. Like I just didn't want to go. Mm -hmm. And I just, but I felt bad for him, you know, because he was an only child at that time and so I went and when coming back the 
his mom, which was a family friend, mm -hmm. she missed the exit that we were supposed to get off at. Mm -hmm. And so she just pulled on the side of the road and she just backed the car up. And when she backed the car up, there was another car coming. They were on their honeymoon, they were drinking and smoking, you know, just having a good time you're on your honeymoon, you know, but weren't, wasn't really looking um, at what was coming. So they hit us from behind. I was in the back seat and the little boy was on my lap. And after we had bought the clothing, he said to me, the first one back to the car gets the window. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm taller than him, so I'm bigger. So I said, okay, let's go. Mm -hmm. So we went. So then he was like, no, that's not fair. You know, I'm like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Just sit on my lap. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll both get the window, mm -hmm. sit on my lap. Yeah. So when the impact came, I... I pushed him forward and because the spare tire hit me on my spine, on my back. So when the spare tire hit me, I pushed him forward and he, he, he died. Oh my goodness. Um, so then I, they had to get the jaws of life to take his mom, me and, and him out. Um, they, me and him next to on the highway laying down because they couldn't find a pole on me. So they were waiting for ambulances to come. So we were there because we were all unconscious, you know. Yeah. And they took they took us to the hospital but they put me in the room with him and they pronounced him that but I then started to get a pulse and I started to not wake up but like make noises mm -hmm. yeah. you know like when you're in pain mm -hmm. and then they were like oh she's alive mm -hmm. so then that's when they take me to another room and they just start working on me get me breathing again and finally they got me going and um, then I spent three weeks in a coma. So I fell into the coma and I woke up on my birthday wow. from the coma. That is crazy. So it's like you reborn again. Yes. Wow. You know? So, um, so then, yeah, so I was in a coma for three, three weeks. But I was then put in the hospital for four and a half months. Mm -hmm. And that's just trying to recoup. Um, back then, they didn't know. So I had to like stay. It's like on a cot. Mm -hmm. Because back then, they thought, well, if we spit them up, you could only do damage, more damage. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and at that point, they hadn't really done any testing on me because they weren't sure what was happening. So I had to lay in this, it's a cot and they raised it. And in order for me to turn or see anything, um, they would put this cot on top of me, one behind me, one on top, strap me mm -hmm. um, with belts. And then just turn me real quick. So then I'd be looking at the ground yeah. for two hours. And so every two hours, this is what I went through until I was able to sit. So I did that for about a month and a half. Wow. That is, that is a crazy story. I did, yeah. I mean, back then, you figure, even back in the 50s or 60s, people don't know. And you were only 11 years old, correct? You were mm -hmm. only 11. Well, you turned 11. 
No, I had turned 12. You had turned 12. When I woke up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I w- at what moment do you find out that your friend passed away? You know, the doctors don't really tell you, mm-hmm. but they, after I was treated uh, at that hospital for like two months, yeah. they sent me to a rehab for two and a half months. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know what it is, but God does something to you that you don't attempt to move or get up, you, you, you just don't. So I was in bed not realizing that I couldn't feel my leg. Mm-hmm. So when I was going to rehab, I noticed that they were taking me in a wheelchair and bringing me back. And so they bring me back, put me on the bed. So I'm thinking, oh, I just have to do this to go to therapy. Mm-hmm. But the doctor came in. And he brought a wheelchair, mm-hmm. uh, the big hospital bulky wheelchair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know them. And he said to me, um, this is what you will spend the rest of your life in. Oh, and God. that's how I was told that I was paraplegic. Yeah. So, yeah. heartless. Yeah. I, you, <laughs> you know, because I, like, I feel like that that's one thing that happens to mostly everybody like they don't really tell you and then mm-hmm. once once you kind of do find out if you do find out on your own versus somebody telling you i don't know if anybody kind of knows how to really break that news to somebody so it might come out the wrong way sometimes you know but mm-hmm. but then at the same time like for me for instance i found out because i just seen them doing some stuff down there and i was like whoa i can't feel my legs you know and like a couple of days went by and like you don't really like I didn't really think about it, but then, like, once they came in and then I seen, like, a little bag and, like, they kind of, like, capped me, I was like, I think I'm paralyzed, and that's pretty much how I kind of just put two and two together, and that's kind of how I find out. Like, I didn't I didn't know anything. I didn't know my level of injury. I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know anything, and, you know, like, that was so, the stuff I learned. Yes. Yeah. I, I remember... Cassie talking with you mm-hmm. and you had mentioned that you were in a car and the gun you know mm-hmm. went off yeah. and you didn't know that you were who stopped the car you say you were driving oh I stopped the car okay so what happened is when it went off it's it, it scared me because I didn't I didn't expect the gun to go off so the first thing I did was literally press on the brake so once everything, once everything happened, I this one thing that I forgot to mention too is once I realized everything that had happened, I had got like this, like this jolt of electricity, like go through my whole entire body, and the only thing that I could really think about was just jamming on the brakes. So so when that happens, I just jam on the brakes, and then from there, I think I like. Pass out, and then from and I know that, I know that they said that the car moved and hit somebody, and um, well, it hit the person that was in front of me, but it wasn't no damage done. So they just was like, you know what, don't even worry about it. Like just handle everything that's going on with him, and mm-hmm. you know, just, just okay. do it like that. Yeah. Uh, so you hit another car as well. Yeah, yeah, but remember, I was at a light, so it's just like the car was just going from you know once you take your foot off the brake. It was only going that fast, so it, it probably just like you know, like just tapped the person that was in front of me. It wasn't mm-hmm. really like I wasn't really going fast or anything like that. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. It's fine. Sorry it's life. To get back. It's life. Things happen. It's, it's all right. I'm here now. And mm-hmm. both of you yeah. guys, both exactly. of you guys are here now. You know, I, I honestly, it's like it's crazy to hear your story, and then you know, also yeah. Kevin's just because you know life really could have been taken and for and especially for you for you to see you know that the other kid was didn't make it and for you to make it that's literally a miracle a blessing because you felt the impact really you know and Mm -hmm. it really is a blessing so it is so whenever the accident happened 
did you say that the tire hit both of y'all? It hit me, and because he was on my lap, mm-hmm. I I took him, and he hit the front seat. Oh. But with me and the front seat, his insides were how do they how did they say it? Like just meshed together. Yeah. So nothing was connected anymore with him. Yeah. So that's He's why so small like, and fragile. Yeah. yeah. I, I was, for the longest, I had to go through therapy because all along I'm thinking, I am the one who took him. You know, I would have just gave him the window. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe he would he would still be here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, you, yeah, you live that with that guilt. Yeah. So, you know. Do, do you feel um, like it's a it was remorse? Hmm? Do you feel like it's survivor's remorse? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. It was a convertible. So back then, they don't have um, trunks. They just have like a lining in the yeah. trunk between the trunk and the back mm-hmm. um, seat. So that's the one that when the wheel came out, that's why it came out from back there. Mm. Yeah. So I'm a T7. A T7. So. And did anything happen to his mom? His mom, um, she had um, fluid go to her brain. Uh-huh. So she had three um, surgeries. She was never the same, the same. She never could walk the same. Um, it looked like she had a stroke. Yeah. Like it affected her so bad that yeah. She had problems walking. But she was able to walk. Mm-hmm. She still walks with a limb. Mm-hmm. But she's good. Do you still talk to her at all? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every time I go to New York mm-hmm. I do not like her to see me in my wheelchair. Mm-hmm. So like whenever I go to see her at her house my best friend because it's my best friend's aunt. Oh, okay. So I asked I asked my best friend, I said, Janet, do you mind just carrying me and putting me on the couch? Mm-hmm. You know, so when she comes to see me, I'm on the couch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then when I leave, we let her go to the room or mm-hmm. wherever she's going. Yeah. And then Janet picks me up. Yeah. yeah. And, and, so that I just don't I know just her seeing me mm-hmm. but it's different when you see someone in a chair mm-hmm. than seeing someone on the couch yes you I, know I totally understand yeah and it's crazy because you know you don't really think about that but because you were in that you know that whole incident you kind of know how it feels like to remember the past you know how hard even the little things you know you might see and it'll bring you back to those moments and Mm -hmm. that's you know that's really sweet of you too you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's sweet of you yeah but i don't have me or my parents we don't have anything you don't have a relationship with your parents no like that then we all we continued our relationship oh okay, no we okay. weren't upset with her or mm-hmm. anything right accidents happen you know yeah. it could have been avoided yes but it was meant to be it's out of your you know it's out of your control things like that are just out of control you can't control those things yeah you know? mm-hmm. so you can't you can't now so. now the couple that hit y'all was they ever charged with anything or did, did, did anything yeah happen with it them? was yeah, they were charged, um, and they for drinking and driving and having drugs in the car. Yeah. Um, but they did very little time. I can't. I don't even remember. Mm-hmm. But nothing happened to them in the accident. They were yeah. fine. Wow. Okay. So, so did they get charged with like vehicular homicide? Or I don't know. Oh. I don't think so. Now, no. now, now, when she pulls over on the side, does she back up 
on the side or it or does she back up like actually on the highway? No, on the side. She backs up on the side. Okay, so they ran off the road then. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, because I was I was trying to look for pictures. Mm-hmm. I know I have pictures, but I couldn't find them. Mm-hmm. Um, for insurance purposes, we needed to have pictures. Yeah. So we had them, but I cannot find them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, now, was you able to file like a civil lawsuit on them? Um, I no, we didn't. You know, we we just. We were just so devastated and worried about what was going to happen next Mm -hmm. that our attorney dealt with, you know, the insurance companies and so on. And back then I got Mm $40,000 and that was, you know, that's it. That was it. That's all the attorney could get. Yeah. You know. (sighs) Now people get millions. (laughs) But you know um, but mm-hmm. and then so you know back to when the incident happened when you were 11 so you said you were in the hospital for or like therapy for like four months yeah four and a half months did, right. did you go back to school or how was that transition I guess back in the day too you know what was that transition like well um I did go back home mm-hmm. from the hospital. I didn't want to leave the hospital mm-hmm. because I was not ready to face the world mm-hmm. in a wheelchair, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, I was worried about the way people looked at me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was just nervous about the whole thing. Right. And so I, I went back home, and as soon I went into my dad's bodega, there was a friend of mine there. And he looked at me and he started laughing. And I was like, oh, no. No, I can't. I can't come out of my house. I want to go home. I don't want to see anybody. Just take me home. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, I spent two years. I didn't leave my house. I was nothing but depressed. I look outside at my window and I see all my friends playing, mm-hmm. yeah. but they wouldn't come visit because they're young. Yeah. You know, they're out, they're playing, they're doing mm-hmm. kid stuff, mm-hmm. and I'm in a, 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 a room yeah. that I don't want to be bothered. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, I stayed in that room for two years. I got homeschooled one year and then they said okay so you can go and finish sixth grade Mm -hmm. so I went in I finished sixth grade perfect I then was supposed to go to junior high Mm -hmm. but they didn't have all they had steps Mm -hmm. nothing was ABA accessible at that point Wow! so there were steps so I couldn't go to junior high so they sent me to a mentally challenged school because it was one floor. Yeah. And I was there with people who were mentally ill. And so that whole year I spent in that school. And I mean, I missed it because there was nothing to learn. I wasn't mentally ill. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, that's like, it it really hurts my heart, you know, because I just, I feel like you, you didn't deserve that, you know, Uh, I, and for you to kind of tell the whole, you know, the whole world here on YouTube, you know, what you went through, you know, I just, it's, it's heartbreaking, it is heartbreaking, but it's, it's, it's a learning lesson also for society out there, you know. Look, it, it, you got to really kind of, we, we got to learn. We're, we're learning from this. What you're telling us, we're learning from it. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's tough. Now, um, 
did you have any brothers and sisters like growing up or you were were you an only child um my brothers and sister were a lot older uh-huh. i oh. my youngest brother is 17 years older than me so i was yeah being raised as the only child okay so they was already going out the house then by that time so they weren't at home with you when you got back home from your, you know, it was kind of, you were still kind of like the only child. Just home about mm-hmm. And that's also hard for me to really imagine, you know, a 12-year-old little girl going through depression. You know, it's like, you're a child. You, what, you, you know, depression at, you know, 12 years old, you know, some people don't experience, experience depression until they're, way older Mm -hmm. so i i can only imagine what you were i can't imagine what you were going through at that time um and then at that time period as well yeah that time what was that and then at that time period as well you said it was right it was 1975 Mm -hmm. you know mental health isn't taken as serious it wasn't taken as serious back then as it is today Mm mm-hmm as so it I, is now. Mm-hmm. So That's true. I, I'm pretty sure you did feel isolated. I'm pretty sure you did feel alone. Because, I, again, I can relate as far as, you know, mm-hmm. almost, staying, right. almost staying in the room for two years. Like, I did go out. I feel I, huh? I was, I was saying that I can relate as far as staying in the room for, like, two years. Now, I didn't stay in the room for two years but it felt like it because I just I didn't want to leave. That's where I right. felt comfortable. I didn't want people to see me in my wheelchair. Even though I didn't mind going out, I just didn't want to see people that I knew, that knew me, mm-hmm. you know. And like, I, I guess I just didn't want to see them. I was I was afraid to really go experience the world in a wheelchair. I mm-hmm. I, I didn't know what was out there for me. But, right. Mm-hmm. But then she came back into my life and. You know, she made me get up out the bed and, you know, go do mm-hmm. things. You know, yeah, so. get out that dark room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, was, it, yeah. Was, it was dark. You know, the walls were blue. It was it was dark. It was dark up in there. Mm-hmm. But, but I got out. Yeah. You got out. But then I went, I came back and I went back to, to junior high. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then as I'm in junior high, my, I get scoliosis. You know, being so young mm-hmm. and all of this happening. So I got scoliosis. So I had to have my back, first back surgery. And back then, um, I had 269 stitches down my back because they had to put Harrington rods in to try and hold the scoliosis from getting worse. And I had to be put in a body cast for nine months. Mm-hmm. So that again, I'm in bed in my room. Can't sit up. Can't do anything for another nine months. Mm-hmm. So then, you know, I go back into another depression. Yeah. During junior high, I mm-hmm. guess, around that time. Mm-hmm. I was 13. Yeah, that's, that's tough because I can only think about, you know, what most people are doing at that age, you know, at 13. And what did your support system at that time look like, I would say, during those nine months? Like, who would you, if you, if you did talk to anybody, who were you talking to? I was talking, well, I had my parents, mm-hmm. and I had met, a, he eventually turned out to be my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And we just, he would come and visit me during the weekend. Mm-hmm. But that was my support. Yeah. Just them. Your you know, because then again, my friends, mm-hmm. I can't go out and play. Mm-hmm. They were not going to come mm-hmm. and sit with me. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. I went through that again. And did you go back to, after those nine months, what was it like, I guess, your body, too, at the same time? Like, how are you feeling after those nine months? Did, is that, did that body cast really help your body, or do, did you feel yeah. better after that surgery? It, yeah, it healed the, the bone. 
Mm -hmm. back. Um, I had to go to a lot of physical therapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they did and everything. Yeah. Everything was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were you in a lot of pain as well, like, during that time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I used to have a lot of spasms. Mm -hmm. Really bad spasms. Okay. Um, and I used to take Valium for them. And I, at one of my points that I was depressed, I took a handful of Valium. Oh, wow. And I just wanted to, like, disappear. Mm -hmm. And so they found me. Um, my mom found me, and they took me to the hospital and pumped my stomach. Wow. And unfortunately, unfortunately I'm still here. Mm -hmm. You're meant to be here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And since you're here, you, your kids are here. So. Mm -hmm. It's a positive. I guess, you know, mm -hmm. God, I guess all of us, you know, we we come here for yeah. a purpose, yeah. you know, yeah. and a journey. Right. And I I don't think our journey is over, you know. Definitely not. Yeah. Anytime, anytime. So, you know. The one thing they did tell me when they brought the wheelchair, they they mm -hmm. sit me down in a room before I go home, and they start going down. You won't be able to have children. Um, you'll never walk again. Yeah. You won't be able to swim. Um, just They just went down the line of you don't have a long um expect to see in life mm -hmm. so they can't see you 50, 60, 70 years because they don't expect a person mm -hmm. like me with an injury like that mm -hmm. to have a, a long expectancy. Yeah. yeah. But here I am. Exactly. I know. Exactly. That here is right crazy. Now. With kids. Yeah. 47 years later. Yeah. Whew. That's truly a blessing. That's truly a blessing. Now, I'm I'm curious because I because nowadays almost everything that's accessible to the public is ADA accessible. So nowadays, what was that? <clears throat> nowadays, almost everything that's available to the public is ADA mm -hmm. accessible. But right. but growing up in the '70s and the '80s. How was that for you being in a wheelchair? How was it going places? Like, were places accessible or were places just now becoming accessible? How was it for they you getting around? Yeah, um, I would, <clears throat> some, some like restaurants would let them carry me, would let whoever I was with <clears throat> carry me um, into the restaurant. Yeah. Some said, we can't because of liability mm -hmm. so you can't come in yeah you know so it was yeah it was rough like wherever we went we had to call you know is it accessible mm -hmm. if there is can we still go in mm -hmm. you know it was a lot of discrimination yeah. for people like us mm -hmm. you know um they sent me home you know those those big hospital um Chairs, they that's the one that they sent me home in, mm -hmm. and I used that chair for 15 years. What? So that big, funky, yeah, 15 years. They didn't have Oof. quickies, TIs, they didn't have none of that. Damn. And I'm pretty sure everybody that can relate. As far as like you know, being in a wheelchair, we all know what that hospital wheelchair feels like, looks like, how bulky it is, how big the wheels are, you know, how how small you feel in that chair, you know, because yeah, because I was a child, like I felt like I was lost in it, yeah, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. it, it just pushing it was just so hard, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, it was yeah. yeah I mean, you push it for and when did you get your next wheelchair? <laughs> I didn't get it until I was 26 years old. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Now, what took then you long to get? Oh, sorry about that. 
No, because they didn't make the the wheelchairs that they have now. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so those he, were Everest Jennings. Yeah. You probably heard of them. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it had nothing to do with your insurance. It was just they just didn't have the technology out. It just didn't have right. the, it just didn't have the wheelchairs that they had out now. Right. Yeah. Now, yeah, now I have, you know, the sports one, the smaller one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, much easier to get around in. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And when did, did you ever learn how to drive? Like, were you ever interested in learning these things as you were growing up? Like, oh, my gosh, okay, well, how am I going to learn how to drive? Or Right. When I was in therapy at the hospital, uh-huh. They said to me, well, you'll be able to drive, you know, you'll be able to get out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like thinking at 12, I'm like not thinking of driving, right. you know, at that time. So when I finally was able to come back to high school, um, they, I said, I said to that, that I got to drive. I, I can't depend on people. You know, I mean, I wanted to go anywhere. I had to wait for someone to be able to take me. So I was 18 and I said that, can you buy a car for me so I can drive? Yeah. And he was like, are you sure? I said, yes, I'm a driver. And I did it. Life changed completely. (laughs) I didn't look back. I That's party. Amazing. I did everything. Yes. Oh. You know, you just, yeah, I was, yeah. I was going where I wanted to go when I wanted to go. Exactly. So you still live life. Once you started driving, you were living life. That's it. <laughs> Living, clubs, friends came back, yeah. you know. It, yeah, because they ain't got know. cars. Huh? I was saying, yeah, yeah, because... At 18, not everybody has a car, you know, but, Mm -hmm. you know, you the one with the car now, you know, you the one driving around now, so, oh, man, I can only imagine, I can only imagine. (laughs) So then it's like, yeah, the car was full with friends, you know, and drive to school, cut school, go to clubs, you know, just... You get in trouble. (laughs) Do, you know, do what a 20-something year old would do, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that what you but, Well, you do? know that, right? Mm-hmm. Because did you feel helpless when you first got like that? Mm-hmm. Because she drove me everywhere. <laughs> like, you know, so at that time, that's when you, if you don't have any patience, that's when you learn it. Because now I'm on her time, you know. She don't want to drive everywhere all the time. Mm-hmm. So, so I literally had to depend on her. And then I, I was like, you know what, man, I got to learn how to drive. And then I just mm-hmm. I, I just looked up stuff. Well, well, I was really getting a runaround as far as like you know getting my license. So I was I was really getting a runaround when it came to like actually doing the program. And I I don't know why, because because I had to do a little stint in the hospital, and in the VA, I had to try to set up the driving appointment, and like they gave me like the biggest hassle and run around and. One of, my, uh, one of the people at the hospital who I befriended, he was like, you know what? I'm going to talk to somebody higher up, and we're going to get you up in there. And then my last like my last day there is when I did everything. And then when I got there, and the thing, you know, like, she, she made it seem like it was no appointments available. Like, 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 there was nothing available. Like, she gave me the runaround that much. And then once we got there, you know, she was taking phone calls, and, you know, like, somebody was at Somebody asked her, hey, can you get one of my friends in or or something like that? And she was like, yeah, no problem. And, it, and like, it just, it kind of infuriated me because she was right there, too. And it was just like, but, but yeah, she was telling me that she ain't had no openings. She couldn't do it. And, the, you know, like, I had to pretty much get somebody higher up to, you know, tell her to get me up in there. And, mm-hmm. and then once I did that, I took the, uh, I got I got trained on like the different devices to drive different hand controls. Mm-hmm. So I did that. I got my license, 
And then I ended up buying my first pair of hand controls off of eBay like seven years ago. Seven, eight years ago. It was like yeah. it was like three hundred bucks. But I use them things I use I use them things every day. And I do want to ask Marissa, so how did you learn how to drive with hand controls or like how did you you know, because that is kind of, you know, back in the in the day I would say. Girl. How did you learn how to drive? They did not care. All you, I just bought the car. Dad bought the car. Uh-huh. And we took it to the guy to get the hand controls put in. Oh, okay. It was $50. $50? $50. What? Listen. Was it like the portable ones or were they like permanent ones? Permanent. What? That's yep. 50 bucks. That's <laughs> Nowadays, yep. it's like what? like The ones I got, the permanent ones, I got like 4500 yeah, I, like that's crazy. <laughs> that's like a car, you I, know. Yeah, yeah. So it was. Yeah, there was a the, you know, the permanent permanent one, and all the guy said to me was the shop where he had it uh-huh. at the end was a dead end road, and he said, "Get in the car. I'm gonna be right here with you, and we're gonna." You know, Test drive it. back and forth. Mm-hmm. I'm like, but no, like you, you got to do this. I don't know what I'm doing, you right. know. <laughs> and he's showing me to pull the push to this, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, you're scared. Are you scared? <laughs> yeah, I had no training. Right. Nothing. So anyway, I'm going back home, and this time I'm I'm with my. One of my exes, okay, because uh-huh. I've had three. I broke up with all three. Wow. God, I don't know why, but just mm-hmm. you know, I'm just I'm yeah. just that. Right. I don't have to have someone waiting for me. I'm like, this mm-hmm. ain't working. Then mm-hmm. next, yeah, you know. So he said to me, "Okay." He pulled over on the highway and he said, "Okay, drive home." I said, "You are crazy. Mm-hmm. Not happening." And he came and he sat in the back seat because I wouldn't move from the passenger. Mm-hmm. He says, okay, then we'll stay, stay here all day. Yeah. I'm like, why? This is the highway. I never did this. Yeah. He's like, you got to learn. Mm-hmm. You have to learn. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I did it. Yeah. I, I went through the highway. I don't know, like, how it's just like such a blur you know mm-hmm. and then when I had to get off the highway and I had to get off the highway where I had the accident <gasps> and and the anxiety mm-hmm. it just yeah. it just built oh my god it's mm-hmm. crazy even now when I go back mm-hmm. I get anxiety whenever mm-hmm. I have to get off that exit you know because that's close and, to home yeah mm-hmm. that was close to yeah it was six miles from the house yeah, you know, so accidents, something, yeah, mm-hmm. sometimes they happen close to home, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but I then started driving in just the regular road to, you know, yeah. and I just that's it. I was like, went to the uh, motor vehicle, got uh, uh, I didn't, I guess they mark it on your license, yeah, mm-hmm. hand controlled, you know. Mm-hmm. And, but I didn't have to show them that I knew how to drive it or anything. Mm-hmm. I just went right there and I told them, I'm in a wheelchair. Here's doctor's prescription. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was it. So you, you didn't have to do a driving test? Or you did? No. What? Oh, my goodness. What, they just gave it to you? <gasps> they just gave it to me. Yeah, they just gave her the I'm like license and you know what's so crazy nowadays they make it so difficult when i tell you me and kevin i've been with him the run around you know it's crazy you know now it's just getting more but really uh you know what i'm glad that it was that easy for you honestly i'm so glad it was easy for you because man nowadays it's way more difficult oh wow but that's crazy and i tell you i know isn't that and Thank the Lord to this day, I've not had a ticket or an accident. Wow. None. Congrats. I'm like, yes. God is with me. Mm-hmm. You know. He definitely is. Because, yeah, I was scared about that. The driving test, I'm like, huh. like, you know, you got to, 
my friends did like the parallel parking and mm-hmm. the three point turns and mm-hmm. I didn't do all of that. You mm-hmm. know, afterwards mm-hmm. I had to practice myself yeah. just to get better. Right. Just you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I tell you back then they didn't care. Yeah. They were like you, you know, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Do what you gotta do and hopefully mm-hmm. you'll be okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Um, and I know you told us you, you went off and then you went to college and everything. So you went on, still mm-hmm. lived your girl. You know, driving probably gave you definitely that boost of confidence that, you know what, I yeah. can do anything. I can go out in the world and go get it done myself. Um, mm-hmm. So you went off to college and how was college like? College, college life was college life. <laughs> yes. It was great. I mean, you meet a lot of friends, mm-hmm. you know, you... I, I, I don't know. It's just, it's awesome. Yeah. Did you um, go um, to school in New York there, like college in New York? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I studied and to be a paralegal. Mm-hmm. And back then, they yeah. had just started with computers, so computer programming. Mm-hmm. And okay. um, so I did both. Yeah. Then I went um, and I started working um, for the government. Mm-hmm. Um you know, doing the uh, paralegal. I just love law. I just, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, and I was also a translator. Mm-hmm. So court translator. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I did That's both. Mm-hmm. You know. So you know Spanish. Mm-hmm. Huh? You know Spanish. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, yeah. English to Spanish, mm-hmm. yeah. Now... How hard was it for you to find a job? How far was it from where? How hard was it? How hard was it for you finding employment? Was it hard? You know, it did, yeah. I mean, yeah. Because mm-hmm. remember, there's no ADA. Yeah. Uh, anything okay. accessible, you know, like that. Okay. So going, um, yeah, to work, um, I... I, I mean, I used to, I was used to putting the car in and out mm-hmm. of the, the chair from the time that I was 18. Yeah. So when I went to work, it just, I just took it on like if it was college. Yeah. You know, um, everybody treated me the same, mm-hmm. you know, like everyone else. Yeah. It was nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now... At what time frame do you notice things starting to change as far as, like, from the ADA standpoint? Like, when do you start noticing the change as far as, like, things becoming more ADA accessible? In 1990. 1990? hmm In the 90s. I realized that people had to have ramps at a certain level, mm. um, that you can be able to push up yourself mm-hmm. and not fall backwards. Yeah. Um, um, bathrooms, the stalls were made bigger. Mm-hmm. So I was able to go to the bathroom without <laughs> getting help. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So yeah. it back then, I mean, it was really yeah. a long time. Yeah. And I feel like that one thing that, people don't notice is you know like for me for instance like whenever I would go use a restroom I would always use the handicap accessible restroom not no like not not really thinking about it but now now when I go in there and I see somebody use the handicap accessible restroom I like I'd be looking at them a certain way because you know that's for people that like me, you know, but mm-hmm. everybody wants to use it because it's so much bigger than the actual little ones. And it's just like, I'm sitting over here waiting because somebody wants to use the bigger, the bigger, mm-hmm. room, you know, like the bigger stall. So it just, mm-hmm. it, it just, yeah, sucks. people want to like, change, yeah. you know, people mm-hmm. want the bigger stall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, okay. And what was that first thing that you noticed that you was just like, wow, you know, like, dang, like finally something for me. You know, like they change something, you know, like uh, like it could be like a certain ramp and like a certain restaurant that you like or, you know, just something mm-hmm. like just becoming like available. Like, 
I'm like, it could be anything. That's, yeah, that's like when life opens up. Mm-hmm. When I was able to go wherever I wanted mm-hmm. and not have to call in advance yeah. and say, will you let me up your stairs mm-hmm. if oh. I go? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. that's when, yeah, my whole world's open. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, have you have you ever seen the movie Crip Camp? Which no, no. Well, I'm, it is a movie, but it's a documentary. You should de- you should definitely watch the documentary mm-hmm. called Crip Camp. You should definitely watch it. It it, it shows you. Um, well, well, first off, it's about a camp, and everybody who goes there, like they have some type of disability. So everybody there, like they. Like they're there and then they're pretty much like just going to summer camp. And then, you know, like they doing like stuff for the first time, experiencing stuff for the first time, you know, like having sex, doing some little drugs, you know, like they're having fun at a mm-hmm. summer camp. But then some of them leave and then they go off to college. And then that's when a group of them, they get together from that camp and then they start advocating for our rights. So that's when things start becoming, you know, ADA accessible because they were you know, advocating for us. So mm-hmm. I was just wondering if you saw it because I was going to wonder if, 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 if you remember that time frame because it was around the time frame of... It was know, in the 70s, up. right? Mm-hmm. No, yeah, that was yeah. in the 70s. Yeah, so... I'll send it yeah, to you. Yeah, like, I, um, I was in, um, at the job, I advocated mm-hmm. for people, to, to, for us to be able to, because it was just me in the wheelchair that worked there. Yeah. Everyone else was able bodied. Mm-hmm. Um, there were some older people but they they didn't have to you know, worry about going up the stairs. Yeah. They they were they were, you know, good enough to be able to walk upstairs. Mm-hmm. So when I said, you know, here I'm working here but I don't have a bathroom that I can go to mm-hmm. I need I need to go to a bathroom, mm-hmm. um, and and the same at in the school. I remember having to go to the 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 um, nurse, and they had a little bigger bathroom, mm-hmm. and that's how I was able to go to the bathroom there. Mm-hmm. So it, it yeah. So I was advocating for years, mm-hmm. and finally. It got done. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that one thing that I noticed that it's not really talked about a lot is the accessibility on airplanes. Uh. Like, we can, like, you know, like, I want to travel overseas, you know, but, you know, like, we we don't have a place where we can, you know, put our wheelchair together and then go to the bathroom. It's like... Uh-huh. I don't know. I, I guess they just don't talk about it, or it's like somebody's not speaking up enough. And I feel like that that's one thing that we need to start speaking up on because, you know, mm-hmm. we need to be able to use the restroom while we're mm-hmm. on these planes. You know, mm-hmm. so like the bathroom is like a big thing. You know, people need to be able to, you know, pretty much just right. leave themselves, especially if you're on an eight hour flight. Well, like, like, mm-hmm. like, I guess they just expect you to hold it, you know, for eight yeah. hours. You know? I know. So say you got to sit there. You can't drink water. Or you, you know, you can't drink anything because exactly. you're scared that you're going to go. Exactly. You know, exactly. and and here you are, like, and warning else. and search, you know, yeah. And but you know, I've learned um, as time went on, I travel by myself now. So whenever I go anywhere on a plane, I just go by myself. Mm-hmm. Um, break the chair down. You know, show them how to do it. And because they're small, the chairs are so much smaller, mm-hmm. I'm able to get up to the second row. And then I'll just transfer onto there. And when it's time, you know, to bring the wheelchair, they already know. Because I bring my cushion. Mm-hmm. I have armrests. I bring everything with me. Yeah. Because I've gotten parts of my chair lost. Mm-hmm. You know. What? Yeah. And, and you're there. In this place with no chair. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! And you want to know mm-hmm. what? I I heard a story like that not too long ago, 
it was a guy he went overseas to go do I, I guess like some type of tournament and they lost his whole wheelchair mm-hmm. they, they did not know where his and, and that's something that I worry about all the time it's like how can you lose a how can you lose the wheelchair if I'm getting off of it at the entrance of the plane and then they're just supposed to just take it and put it underneath the plane mm-hmm. like, that's something that I worry about all the time because you don't know how they're one. You don't know how they're taking care of your wheelchair. They're probably just throwing it up in there, so any, mm-hmm. so any type of damage can happen. And you know, like say you say we do travel overseas, and then once we get there, you know the the wheelchair is at JFK, and I'm over here in London. You mm-hmm. know, it's like I would. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even want to. They gave that. me uh, a chair from from the airport. Which was again another big tear. Yeah. It's not the same until my chair came in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it. Yeah. yeah. So that yeah, they're never responsible yeah. on that part. And you want to know what? I feel like that they might feel like it's the same. Oh, it's a wheelchair. It should be okay. But in reality, it's really not because your wheelchair is fitted for you. Mm-hmm. you know, everything, everything about your wheelchair is fitted for you, versus mm-hmm. just a random wheelchair is fitted for everybody. Right. You know, so it's that, it, it's scary. It's scary. Mm-hmm. It's scary because that's that's one thing that I worry about a lot because we want to travel. I like to travel. You like to travel, you know. And I I don't know. I guess it's like little stressors that you kind of worry about. Like I want to be able to have my wheelchair on the plane with me, you know. Yeah. So I, I don't know. It's. Mm-hmm. I feel like that that's something that we kind of need to start advocating for because, again, if there ain't if, like I also feel like if there's nobody, if there's nobody in the in the first class seat, and I feel like people with disabilities or the elderly people should be able to get that, you know, because right. it's just is is bigger seating is more is more close to the front, and you mm-hmm. know like you ain't got to worry about going all the way to the back, right? You know? And then yeah, because when they put you in that chair. You know that little chair to bring you down the aisle. Yeah, you're like you feel like you're hitting all your seats. Well, right? I'm bigger, so my <laughs> elbows are hitting all the seats. I'm literally hitting everything. My, my like my legs are long too, so they're hitting everything, and mm-hmm. it's just it's it's not a horrible experience, but it's. You're touching uh, yeah. people. You don't want to be touching well, people. Well, no, 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 yeah. because I've been getting on the airplane first. I like, but I have gotten I on. I say. have gotten on there last. Yeah, you know. So, oh. but but that's not a, that's not a good feeling either. That's not a good feeling. I know it's, it, that is definitely a horrible feeling. Whenever you gotta get on the airplane and everybody's already seated. And then it's like, damn, we're waiting on you now, you know. Right. And then all eyes are on you because now they're wheeling you back in this, you know, mm-hmm. aisle chair. And it's, mm-hmm. it, it definitely is a, it definitely is a horrible experience. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. We need to do more. Mm-hmm. We need to do we more. Do. No, they need to do more. Yeah. They need to do more. They, do. they need <laughs> exactly. to. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Because right. uh, they going up with yeah. these I, I too. Hate, and what about the, when you are going to get checked? Oh. you know it, oh yeah oh my god they bring they, i don't know by you but they bring me into a room no. you know and i'm in this room forever it seems because then they got to find a woman mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. available to yeah. come mm-hmm. and check you yeah and then you know check 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 and it's like can you stand <laughs> no I i'm in a chair like yeah. They're like, well, how how far can you stand? I'm like, I just said I can't stand. I will lift myself up, mm-hmm. and you can touch down there whatever you want, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, the cushion. But yeah. no, you can't, you know, do that. Mm-hmm. So some people are, yeah, I've, yeah. I've missed planes. They're like, oh, don't worry, the plane will wait. No, the plane doesn't wait. Nope. Mm-hmm. You know, you write about that. Huh. You write it. it. The last time was the only time I ever got brought into a room, but they only mm-hmm. brought, but they only brought me they only brought me into a room because they said I had some I don't know some type of explosive type residue on my shoes. So mm-hmm. then, like they wanted to check everything, but 
I don't know. I, I put the video up on YouTube. It was it was it was a horrible experience, but but normally yeah. but normally when they check me, they check me in front of everybody. Like and that mm-hmm. and that again, like that's like that's a horrible experience too because you know, mm-hmm. like you're literally getting patted down in front of everybody. Like you mm-hmm. know, like and it ain't like a normal pat down. Like you're getting felt up on. Like they're literally filling up on you in front of everybody. It's not a pat down, pat down. It's, yeah, it, they're like, grabbing. yeah, like they're getting up in everything. <laughs> they're you grabbing, know? making sure they don't miss anything. Exactly. And then you gotta, mm-hmm. again, you got to do a push up. You got to lean that. over here, lean over there, lean forward. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and it also, is embarrassing too. It is. Yeah. It is because everyone is staring. Like, mm-hmm. why don't you mind your business? You exactly. know, go about your own. Exactly. You know, exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's, and then it's like when they they check like under your breath. It's like, well, what do you have here? It's like mm-hmm. a bra. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah, that's they, crazy. They ask the, the stupidest thing. Yeah. So they you do know? fill up under your bra area okay. yes yeah. you see they, oh they feel they go in between my legs uh-huh yeah. they do go between mm-hmm. kevin's legs yeah too. They, they go up everything everything they they feel you up and down right and, and and for you you said that you normally get taken into a room it's not it's not <laughs> like that for me it mine happens out there in front but but again they I, do yeah. ask sometimes if i want to go Room. Yeah, but again, you trying to get to your plane. Yeah, you, you don't. I know. Yeah, I you don't have time. time. Yeah. yeah, and then it already takes you fifteen <laughs> minutes to get there because then they gotta wait for somebody to come. Hold up, you stand right, just wait right here, and then we are gonna right. have somebody come. It take ten to fifteen minutes for them to come. So then, by right. the time they get there, excuse me, sir, do you want to go into a room? Like, no, I'm trying to get to my plane. Like, let's hurry up and get this out the way. Right. You know, so yeah, yeah, that's what I do. Like, they will start out there you know and everyone's looking and they'll be like oh come to the room and i'm like why you already done most of it here mm-hmm. and they're like well because they swapped my chair yep. mm-hmm. explosive you know i'm like i don't get that I, but that's one thing i don't get like why are you checking my chair for explosives like are you checking everybody else for explosives i don't understand what <laughs> does my wheelchair have to do with explosives i don't get that <laughs> that's one thing i just don't i don't get I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. But hey, you know yeah. what they got to do now, I guess. But yeah, but I feel like everybody should be getting checked for explosive residue. Like they got to swab your hands and everything. Like why are you <laughs> like like why are you swabbing my hands? Like she, like she doesn't get her hands swabbed. You know, uh-huh. like they don't check her for explosive residue. You know, she can I'm, go right through. Exa- right? Exactly. So I don't understand. You know, and then they got to do it and then put it in the little machine. Right, the so, little machine. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like oh, it didn't read it right. Let's do it again. Yes. yes. But again, last time my shoes came up, he was like, "What did he asked me if I was playing with explosive?" He says he said something like that. I don't know, but he said he said that it could have been anything like lotion or something like that. So it was just like it was it was right. Horrible. Yeah, it was horrible. Yeah, the shoes too. Everything comes off. Yeah. Yes. And then I have a backpack that I mm-hmm. take, and my life is in that backpack, yep. you know. And then they open it, and then they start taking things out, and it's that old personal stuff, you know. Right. And you're like, mm-hmm. it's like your, your bag is always the bag that gets flagged. Like, mm-hmm. whose bag is this? You're like, that's mine. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. It never fails. My bag yeah. always gets flagged. I don't know what it is. It just always mm-hmm. gets flashed and checked. And again, like you said, personal stuff in there. I got catheters up in there. I got, you know, mm-hmm. j- just just stuff up in there that I Supplies. need. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, well, what's this? Well, what's this? You know? And it's, mm-hmm. it's really, yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. It, yeah. It always gets flagged. Always. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why, but always. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully that'll change for us someday. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Make it easier for you guys. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, right? It will. It will. We just gotta. We just gotta speak up a little bit more. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's See, it. we don't speak up as much as we should. We you don't. Know? We don't. Because in the airport, we just trying to go. We just trying to get to our plane. Like it's that's just the hassle right there. Mm-hmm. You know, right. getting there. Then we gotta get up on a plane. You know, like the whole time you're probably thinking about man. Now I gotta get up on this aisle chair and do this and that. Like you just want to just get through. You know, you don't want to make a right. scene because you don't want to miss your flight. You uh-huh. know, 
Like, mm-hmm. but I feel like I want to make a scene every time. You know, it's just you know, I but I but I didn't pay for my flight. I most likely didn't pay for the hotel at the destination I'm about to go to. And it just like mm-hmm. you really, you really just don't have the time and the luxury to really kind of complain because mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. is kind of wrapped up in this flight. Yeah. Yeah, now I've even been going to the airport three hours before. It takes you because, that long? Yeah. Because I've lost my flight too many mm-hmm. times before. Yeah. And, yeah, and, you know, the thing is they have to find a woman to pat you down. Mm-hmm. And there are not many women just standing around there. You're right. You're right. I, you know? I didn't think about that. I didn't think yeah. about that. Because it takes, then, it takes them forever for me. So I can only mm-hmm. imagine you're right. There are not that many women like that are just available mm-hmm. for that position. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, that's why sometimes I'm like, no, check me right here, right now. I don't have time to go in there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, like, screw it. I don't care who's looking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. changing the subject. So I do want to ask, uh, you have two kids, right? And I want to know, how was it... How was your pregnancy whenever you had your kids? Like, was it, were also, what were you thinking before you had your kids? Like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? You know, or. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was thinking, but they, you know, they told me I couldn't have children, you know, back then. Um, But then I had a tubular pregnancy and I didn't know that I was pregnant. Oh, okay. Um, so I went to the doctors, and they had to do a DNC, which is clean your uterus out. Mm-hmm. And then they said, this may happen again, because you are not able to have children. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, I'm leaving it up to God. Yeah. Because if God wants me to have children, I'm going to have children. Mm-hmm. And I got pregnant like three months later. Mm-hmm. And I carried full term. Mm -hmm. I looked like I swallowed a basketball Mm because I was so big. Right. And um, I went into labor. I felt my labor pain. You did? Um, Yeah. I couldn't have my children naturally, Mm -hmm. um, only because of the way my pelvic was um, from the accident, the way, like, it shifted my body. So my pelvic bone never fully grew the way they're supposed to so even if the baby was trying to come out your Mm -hmm. pelvic bone wasn't going to open far enough Mm. so i had to have two c-sections oh okay Mm -hmm. but both of them um perfect i mean my second my daughter she's i gained three pounds with that girl and she weighed nine pounds when she was born. What? I look horrendous. She just took the life out of me. Yeah. Aww. Yes. And I was sick all nine months, you know. Aww. So I said to her, see what you put me through. Mm-hmm. But she's, yeah, she's my everything. She's always checking up. Yeah. She's you a little. Know? You got yourself a mm-hmm. me. A little, because I tell you, we look so much alike. Really? Oh. And she doesn't think so, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. we do. Yeah. I said, that's okay, because I never said that I look like mom. Mm-hmm. Everyone always told me. I'm like, no, we don't. Yeah. And now I look at pictures, I'm like, oh, my God, I am mom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? So, and then my son looks like his father. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. And is there any advice or anything you would want to let, you know, women out there who are scared, who are in a wheelchair, like, is there anything you would want to let them know, like, don't be afraid or just anything that you would let them know? Yeah. You know, my thing was carrying the baby Mm -hmm. and having to push the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. What I got was, thank God, back then they had those, um, you could carry uh, the baby on your back or in your front. It's like a little pouch. Mm-hmm. So I I bought a pouch like that. And then I just put him in there, you know, strapped the pouch around me, put him in there, and I cook and clean and go shopping and do everything. 
with them right in front of me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't. I feed them, you know, I take them out and yeah. feed them and all. So when it came down to carrying when they were little, no. Mm-hmm. And then when they were growing up, mm-hmm. I don't know how, but they would climb on my pedal. And then for my pedal, they'd start like pulling my shirt to, mm-hmm. to for me to be able to pick mm-hmm. them up, yeah. you know. I don't know how they learned to do that. I've never told them to stand on my pedal, yeah. but they learn, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and thank God, in, you know, they were good. No accidents happened with me while they were with me or anything, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah. But what I did get with my son um, when I was pregnant with him in my second trimester, I... Um, I developed epileptic seizures, mm. and um, so I had a seizure while I was still pregnant. And then when after I had them, um, I had another seizure. So then I couldn't be left alone with the baby because he fell on me many times when I was feeding him. I'd have a seizure, mm. and yeah. So then that part was real. Yeah. depressing yeah as well now were those explained seizures those are just random i guess right those type yeah. of seizures yeah those are just random yeah um they gave me medication so mm-hmm. i now take medication yeah. thank the lord it's been over 20 years i haven't had a seizure mm-hmm. um but yeah they came on but they doctor said that they do come on sometimes to pregnant women yeah. You know, yeah. they don't know. Right. And when you were pregnant, were you able to feel the baby move in your in your mm-hmm. belly and you know, all that? That was one thing I was worried about. Yeah. You know, like, how am I going to know, you know, it's moving? Mm-hmm. How am I going to even know if I'm having contractions? Mm-hmm. Right. You know? Yeah. And yeah, I felt everything. And I guess because I'm so small, you mm-hmm. know, here that. Oh my, that I was like, I would grow out. Mm-hmm. And every time, like, the baby would hit my ribs mm-hmm. or, you know, there was just certain places and, oh my God. Yeah. It was hard. That was hard, you mm-hmm. know, the, the later trimester. Mm-hmm. And the beginning was fine. Yeah. Um, and then I had, I felt my contractions, mm-hmm. which I didn't know I was going to feel. Yeah. Um, so I went through all all that pain. Yeah. yeah. Okay. See, that's good to know for anybody out there who's mm-hmm. you know, wanting yeah. to have a baby and let you know you can yeah. have babies and you will feel everything. You know you will. Yes. <laughs> Those pains are strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, ha- I have a friend who was in a car accident as well. She had three children and she had them all naturally. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. So it can happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it just depends on your body. Right. That's beautiful mm-hmm. to know. Mm-hmm. Yes. I know you guys are gonna yeah. have yours. Yeah. Just leave it up to God. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Right. We're definitely you know, leaving yeah. it up to God. Mm-hmm. We talk about it every day. <laughs> we talk about it every day. So. Yeah. No, it's sometimes. No, sometimes I know I have friends and like they talk about it constantly, and I'm like, you know what? You just keep saying it. Just let it go, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's hard. I understand it's hard, you know, to let mm-hmm. it go because I know with me when they told me I couldn't, I, I didn't want to believe it, you yeah. know. And I, I just, I let it go. Yeah. When, whenever it happened, I was like, thank you, God. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a, a healthy baby. Thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, that's all you can ask for. Yeah. Right. You know. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, I guess this is another question I wanted to ask was like growing up, I guess, in college, and were you scared to get into relationships? Like, oh my gosh, nobody's ever going to want to date me. I'm in a wheelchair. Like, how, how did you go about, you know, getting past those feelings right. and, you know, letting it happen? Right. Right. Um, 
when I met my first boyfriend in church, mm -hmm. um, I knew him when I used to walk. Mm -hmm. So we knew each other, but we never really talked or mm -hmm. anything. So him, like, I realized like it didn't bother him. Um, you know, things took extra long for me to, to do, you know, just, they were just obstacles, you know, yeah. and it was okay. You know, he just didn't mind. Yeah. And then me, just me decided I wanted to go out. I wanted to live the crazy life. And, right. and so I broke up with him, mm -hmm. never thinking, am I going to find someone else? Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And then here you go, you go to school and you, some, you meet someone else. And you're like, damn, like, why do you want to see me when you have so many beautiful women out here mm -hmm. that can walk? Mm -hmm. And he was like, uh, but they're not you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they said they don't see the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. But it's hard for me to like, because I see the wheelchair. Right. You know, so it, it was hard for me to. To, you know, grasp about that. Yeah. And then that one, you know, I left. Mm -hmm. And then I met my ex husband. Mm -hmm. And we were married for 28 years. Mm -hmm. And then he decided he wanted someone else mm -hmm. as well as of what he had. And to me, it's like if I'm not the only one, then I'm not the one, mm -hmm. you know. I'd rather be by myself than to be with someone, you know, living like that, mm -hmm. knowing that that person probably doesn't really love you because if they're out there looking elsewhere, mm -hmm. you know. And a lot of people were like, oh, 28 years of marriage, it's a long time. I don't care. I was like, I just don't care. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I've been divorced eight years now. Mm -hmm. And I am happy. Yeah. I'm happy, you know. That's good to now hear. it's me. You know, it's like when, when you get married, you know, it's the husband. Then comes the kids. Mm -hmm. and, and then it's like you're in a routine, your husband and kids. Mm -hmm. And you lose yourself, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when once the marriage, I said no more, I was like, my kids were grown. My daughter was 19. Mm -hmm. And my son was 23, they were grown. Mm -hmm. I was like, it's me. Yeah. It's me time. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a house that I got built, um, especially, you know, for being in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. um, and he wouldn't pay the alimony, so I lost the house. Mm -hmm. So I had to move into an apartment. Mm -hmm. And thank God they were able to fix the shower okay. so it could be a rolling shower yeah you know because it's hard you mm -hmm. know yes it is you don't have an accessible place to live right mm -hmm. it, you it, know. it really is it really is um, bed baths don't cut it <laughs> nope they don't they don't and then and then at the same time you know uh like for me i had to have help transferring into the shower when our shower wasn't mm -hmm. uh, a rolling shower and I was here well, well, for about like a year and a half, almost two years. Yeah. Like she had to help me transfer into the shower. So mm -hmm. again, it's like I'm on her time again. So it's like, you know, I got to wait mm -hmm. for her. Hey, babe, can you help me transfer in the shower? And I got to get, you know, I need help transferring out the shower. So, you know, mm -hmm. those things make a big difference because, you know, once right. I find, that was kind of like, that was that once I got the shower accessible, it, it felt just as good as me getting my driver's license because then now i'm able to hop in the shower you know whenever i want to i can get in and out you know i can stay in as long as i want to you know um and mm -hmm. you know i could just go about my day like i can yeah. just go ahead and get ready and everything like that so i had to get when i moved here mm -hmm. um uh, uh it's a commode but it's yeah. a rolling shower yeah. it's just like a wheelchair mm -hmm. um but it's made i guess out of plastic or mm -hmm. something and i just pushed myself into the shower mm -hmm. myself and 
that's it. You know, I can't do it, yeah. you know, myself now. But at the house, I was able to do it as well without that. Yeah. I was able to go from my wheelchair into the shower mm-hmm. at, at the house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know. And then and then also, once we got the, the bathroom done, it, like, everything had to be ADA accessible. So, like, so, like, my shower, it's a rolling shower, but it's big enough to where a wheelchair can turn around in. And mm-hmm. then on every wall, there's a grab bar. But the grab bars are, like, towel racks and stuff like that. But, or, like, or like where the shower thing is, is. So, one thing I try to tell people, you can get things done that doesn't look like you're in a hospital, you know, right. bathroom. You know, you just got to look around. You just got to find things. Like, it can be done. You know, so mm-hmm. you know if you look at our grab bars, they're grab bars, but you know, like they're stylish grab bars, but right. they work for what I need them for. You know, if I did, right. if I did need to grab them, they will work. You know, so mm-hmm. you know, it, it, right. it, it don't have to it don't have to look like a hospital shower or something like that. You know, it can look it can look mm-hmm. nice. It can look nice. So. Yeah, but you know, let me tell you one thing: when you get older, mm-hmm. I've had to now had to transfer back to my transfer board. Okay. I don't have that strength mm-hmm. that I had when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Um, my rotator cuffs are getting, um, they have fragments. So now I don't want to have surgery. So um, I have to get, it's a, a, it's a smart try. Mm-hmm. It's where you have your regular manual wheelchair, yeah. and then it's um you put it in the back. It's a wheel, and it has a motor, mm-hmm. and then that um like if you're gonna go up a hill or push for a long period, you can just like hit it, give it one push, yeah. and then it'll take you. Mm-hmm. You don't have to keep pushing. Um, yeah. Pushing. I've been I've I've been seeing those. I've been seeing those. Mm-hmm. So that what's really been helping me Mm -hmm. um and like you know when i trans when i used to transfer before i used to just grab like you do the the car Mm -hmm. um, over the 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 car door Uh and just one two three you know go Mm -hmm. can't do that anymore um my just the bones and and just the wear and the tear on your upper body mm-hmm. is just it's it's just not the same, mm-hmm. you know. So I try to go to therapy to strengthen, you know, but I have carpal tunnel. Yeah. Why from pushing, you know, repetitive motion. Mm-hmm. So you know, you give one, take one. So it it was you know it's good when you first you know get in the wheelchair. Okay, you know I got this, mm-hmm. and then the older you get. You know, start things. Start. You have to start doing things a little differently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, now, now bathroom wise, mm-hmm. everything, everything changes. But not, not bad for the bad yeah. bad. No, yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, is, is there anything else you would want to recommend? I mean, not I guess say not recommend, but is there anything else I guess you would tell your younger self that you wish you would have did? earlier on in the years like man i wish i would have started doing this you know when i was in my 30s or Mm. whatever Mm. no because i was so active like rehab taught me a lot so i was so active then Mm -hmm. and then as you get older so you don't have to go to rehab i i have a total of five back surgeries Mm -hmm. from when i had my scoliosis to now yeah so the, the back muscles here and forget it, we have no core. So it's not like I can um, lift weights anymore because my arms go up to a certain level. Okay. And then if I put weight on it, it hurts even more. Mm-hmm. So if I could do that, if I could have started that and continued it, I think maybe it would have helped, you know, mm-hmm. just any kind of weightlifting, you know, like 
curls, just anything to try and maintain mm -hmm. some kind of muscle. Right. Yeah. But that's what I would tell myself. Okay. That's good advice. Okay, so so it's so a pretty much try to work out a little bit, try to stay in shape. Work out your upper body. Yeah, work, yeah. Upper body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank God, like, I don't have spasms. Mm -hmm. um, the only time I may have a spasm is, like, if if I have to go to the bathroom. Okay. Like, it's like, uh, okay, we need to go. Right. So, you know, my legs are spasm then. Yeah. Or if I'm laying or sitting in a wrong position. Mm -hmm. That'll let me know. Okay, yeah. let me look and see what's going on. Yeah. But spasms stopped many, many years ago. Okay. I don't. Yeah. I don't have them. Yeah, I've never. I've never had one. Thank God. Um, but when you have them, they hurt. They do. They do. Yeah, that's one thing that I hear about a lot. Cause you know, like a lot of people ask me, "Do I have spasms?" And I, and I tell them I don't. But but I do hear stories like. You know, like they hurt, or you know, somebody might say something like, "Damn, like you don't have a foot plate down there, like while you driving." You know, because I guess they need one. You know, but mm -hmm. these are things that you hear, like these are things that you find out. But it's not things that I can relate to because I don't have spasms. So this is just information that I learn from people that I don't know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why, like, I always try to recommend too is you know, like try to network with other people that are in wheelchairs. Cause that's one thing that I didn't do whenever I first got in a wheelchair. I just uh -huh. I didn't want to talk to anybody that was in a wheelchair, uh -huh. and I wish I would have because then I would have you know learned stuff early on that took me years to learn later on down the line. Mm -hmm. you, know, you like you want to network with with other people that are in similar situations as you, you know, just so you can get you know like some type of game, some type of you know information. Just find a find out how they do things. You know, find out find out about things that are available for you that you don't know. You know that the doctors right. don't tell you that the doctors, you know, can't relate to you. So you know, mm -hmm. you, you just find out stuff from other people, like the smart drive. You know, right. not, not a lot of people know about the smart drive. You know, but right. us putting that information out there, me talking to you, you talking to me, and then I might talk to somebody else, tell them about the smart drive, and then you know they mm -hmm. go get one. You know, so it's, it's just right. it's just really all about passing the information along. I found that about it um, through Ability Three Hundred and Sixty mm -hmm. when they have. Um, oh, what's that? They go to all different kind of places, accessibility or something. Oh, the Abilities Expo. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's how I found about it. Okay. Found out. Yeah, I went to one in Washington. Okay. And one of the girls told me, um, she passed away now. Mm -hmm. Um, Audie, Angel, um, she told me about it. And, um, that's how... And you know, okay. I'm, I'm gonna do. Yeah, I'm gonna get one because I want to get one because I know whenever you know you travel certain places, you know, like the sidewalks aren't really, you know, mm -hmm. how they are here. So it's a little bit more of a struggle, you know. And then like on this wheelchair, I don't have uh, a, like push bar, so like pretty much I just push myself. So I would like mm -hmm. to have, I would like to have something, you know, like that could take the pressure off my shoulders. You know? Right. Pushing, so I definitely need to look. You don't have push drive. bars. No, not on this one. Not on this one. But I, I guess I just didn't like them. Like I guess I just didn't like the look. But once I didn't get them, I just realized uh -huh. how beneficial they really are. They really are because. But you know, they have push bars that that clip down. Hold down. Yeah. I like I have those, but I, I guess I just didn't like it, so I was just like. So they asked me if I wanted them on this wheelchair, and I told them no. But I might have them come back and fit it on there because all I have to do is pretty much just contact the VA, and then they'll send out somebody who can do uh -huh. it. So like, uh, like for this wheelchair, like I had to have somebody come out the house earlier this week to fix my brake, and because okay. um, like this wheelchair was down for like uh, uh, like a month and a half because the brake piece fell off. I mean, broke uh -huh. off. And and then it took them like three weeks to get the piece in, so you know, like, like, oh, it, it, trust me, it's a hassle sometimes. It's right, a, and it's a struggle that a lot of people go through. You know, it's mm -hmm. a struggle I hear about a lot. You know, so right. I have I have the scissor breaks. Yep, I had those too. Oh, Jesus, 
It's like you have to wait for someone to come out and fix them. Mm. You know, because there's no screws that that you can just yeah. do it. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't bring you. I hate them. Yeah. I, I called like a month ago and I said, mm-hmm. I need one, either that of metal yeah. or to push one. You because want to, they make somebody on YouTube. I've seen the other. You see, I didn't like the scissor breaks because they would always break on me. So since I was very active and like I would go to the gym a lot. Like eventually, like within like a, I would say like two or three months, the scissor break would end up snapping, right? So I went and looked it up, and, and, and you know, scissor breaks are like eighty dollars a piece, like just for one. And I looked up on YouTube, and somebody make somebody makes metal scissor breaks on YouTube. I didn't try them because they were, I think they were like one sixty nine for the pair, but somebody, but somebody makes metal scissor scissor uh, breaks. Mm-hmm. And then, so yeah, I gotta look into that because <laughs> the insurance hasn't gotten back to me. Because mm, I'm okay. looking at them and I'm looking and I'm like, damn, they have to have metal ones. Yeah, they do. They do. Okay. And then okay. also, see on this wheelchair, I have disc brakes, but I, I don't like I don't like those ones either. And the guy that came, what is those? Those are like bicycle brakes, pretty much. So, oh, okay. Yeah, but. They aren't the best. Like they work, they work good. But say I do a push up, it still like it still moves. It still has like a little play in it, and I and, mm-hmm. I, and I don't like that at all. Yeah. So the guy who came out to my house the other day, he said that they have a new form of D's brakes, and he was like, uh, "Talk to your rep at the VA to uh, to get them to go ahead and order you a pair of D's brakes." So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. So then I'll let the people know how the D's brakes work. So, but I don't like the scissor brakes at all. I, I mean, they are good, but I don't like them because you know, like you actually got to put down a lot of pressure and, and you know, like to really close it because you know, like I work out at the gym, so I need to have my 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 brakes really kind of tight. So like to put them on, it kind of hurts your hand, and then oh. sometimes whenever you know, like I'm transferring into the car and she has to put my wheelchair in the trunk, it's hard for her to take the brake off. You know, so, mm-hmm. so I would just wreck it. So, so I like the ones that you just push down and pull up. To mm-hmm. me, to me, those are better. You make it easier for mm-hmm. her. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Look well, at yeah. Is there <laughs> anything else, Maritza, that you would like to let us know here on the podcast? Yeah. Anything else we may have missed? I don't know. Yeah, any information? <laughs> you know, j- just anything. <laughs> Is anything that we can use out there? Um, no. Well, we had a good conversation, we I did. do have to say. You know, I, I feel like we could go <laughs> on, but I, you know, it's like, I don't want to, you know, I feel like we, you know, we did, we yeah. got some really good stories yeah. um, from you. Um, mm-hmm. We do appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on here and sure. telling us your story. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like I definitely learned a couple of things. Um, I'm sure. I um, definitely learned a couple of things. Yes. Okay. So okay. thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. This no is, problem. This is truly gonna happen. Listen, I want to well. ask you, why are you like behind Kevin? Does it look what? like I'm behind? It looks Kevin? like that. Okay. Yeah. So I have this this chair, this office chair that I have. Mm-hmm. It has arms on it, like right here. So mm-hmm. I can't, and the arms don't go under the desk. So it's mm-hmm. like it blocks me from going under the desk. So it looks like I'm sitting, oh, you know what okay. I mean? So yeah. it's, I don't know. It's just this chair doesn't go all the way under the desk. So it looks like I'm kind of sitting behind. Okay. And then I know. I was like, why is he back? Like, I yeah. noticed when Kevin's talking sometimes, like, he goes back at you, you know? Yeah, and then Kevin's kind of rolled all the way under his desk. So he's You're right. And he likes to also put his elbows on the table just for, you know, support. It helps with the mm-hmm. back. That's what I try to tell people. It helps with the back. So That's he, why I like to have something to So at, at the same time, he's, you know, leaning on the table. And I'm over here also <laughs> trying to correct my posture and sit up straight, <laughs> you know? So it does look like we're at this awkward I don't know. I'm gonna have to go shop around. Maybe go to Home Goods and shop around for a different little yeah. podcast chair. chair. So that's what I might do this weekend. 
Thank you. Just thank measure you. it before you leave. Yeah. I know. You know. I hate so measuring you know. stuff too. But yes, I'm gonna have to do all that mm-hmm. stuff. But then remember at the same time, she's a lot shorter than me too. Yeah. So if she does find a chair that she's able to go into, then oh, she that might I, be down oh, yeah. here now. That too. If I do find a chair that goes under, then I'm uh-huh. gonna be like way down here. You know, and then I, now he's gonna be looking down at me versus if yeah. we're at the same level. Right. Okay. I don't know. We're going to have to try different things, you know? Yeah. And of course, you see how our startup was. So (laughs) we're learning. Okay. It was was, was tough, but we got it done. Yes. We got it. Thank you. And we're learning. I was like, oh my God, I can't. I I tried. I tried. Yeah. Cassie was trying like so much. She just kept, I mean, going. I'm like, "Hmm." I see you guys. Yeah. You know? No, but, but it's and okay. I love your earphones. Thank you. The pink one. Oh, <laughs> it's the color. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah uh, she was like, grab me the pink ones. I was like, I know it. <laughs> yeah, I know it. She loved pink. <laughs> All right. Yeah, me too. All right. All right. Well, thank nice you. you. I know. Nice Hope you too. have a good weekend. Thank you so much. And then we'll just keep in touch um, through okay. Instagram, okay? Have a ha- okay. Yeah. Any questions? Just ask me, okay? okay. We'll do have a happy fourth. Okay. Oh, yeah, you too. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Got to let it go.